All right, let's check out. This is totally a hard pivot, but let's check out the new second thought video on why means testing is a bad idea. Terrible idea. He just dropped this, so let's fucking go. We are like one of the very first viewers of this. Of this. That's why you watch me in the morning chat. Because we get to the fresh content first. This episode is brought to you by me. Just kidding. You all made this one possible just like all the rest. If you like my videos and you're looking for longer forms- Addie went the past 30 minutes. She didn't drink milk until her mom blew up her phone while she was on stream. What a champion. Socialist content. And Check out the Deep Program. Give some my podcast with Hakeem and Thank you for the prime. We recently did our Flex first deep, live stream on the Deep Program YouTube channel. And we're hoping to do one per month going forward. You can find all the links in the description. In late 2021, right before scrambling to make New Year's plans, ProPublica released a bombshell article. In big, bold font, ProPublica reports that American states hoarded over $5 billion in welfare funds in 2020, a number that has doubled in the last decade. $5 billion set aside specifically for poor American households, sitting in state coffers Jesus while the pandemic Christ. forced countless people out of work and into poverty across the country. In my home state of Texas alone, a place with over 4 million officially poor people and a government sitting on nearly $300 million earmarked exclusively for the Temporary Assistance for Needy Families Program, or TANF for short. This the shit, it, people say TANF. This shit, like, god damn, man. This is, this is a Tropico shack. Have any of you guys played Tropico? It's a video game where you're basically running a small island nation, okay? Um, and you can run it in any kind of uh, 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 way you see fit. But one of the uh, most important elements of Tropico is housing. And making sure that your entire population is housed. And... You know, you are the person in charge of development, right? So the government runs development. Um, and if you have even one shack, it's considered a blight. AKA if you have like even one homeless person, it's a fucking blight. This is the richest country in the world. Fucking embarrassing sitting in state coffers while the pandemic forced countless people out of work and into poverty across the country. In my home state of Texas alone, a place with over 4 million officially poor people and a government sitting on nearly $300 million earmarked exclusively for the Temporary Assistance for Needy Families Program, or TANF for short, the percentage of applicants approved to receive these funds was 7%, a good game, man. about Fun the shit. acceptance rate of MIT. It gets worse. <laughs> to qualify for Incredible. TANF in Texas, a single caretaker with two children must have less than $1,000 in assets and bring in less than $188 per month. That is a ridiculously low amount of money to try to raise a family on. And the sad part is that numbers like these shine a light on only part of the inhumanity of American welfare programs. For people like Fucking Bonnie disgusting. Bridgeforth, a single mother and TANF recipient featured in the ProPublica report, these statistics are just the tip of the iceberg. When you read past the bold letters and wade into the scary land of unbolded 14 point times new Roman. Chat, I have been informed that I am a grifter. And the only thing I can say to that is, is please give some subscriptions. Please give me some money. Uh, the, what I say to the accusations that I'm just trying to make money with my full time job is that's right. That's right. I'm trying to make money from my full-time job as a Twitch entertainer and educator, so I would really appreciate it if you gave me money. If you gave me money, that would really appreciate I would really appreciate that. Zephyr Calling and N Indie Gamer, thank you for the five tier one subs. And Grimferno, thanks for gifting us up. Well, there you go. Uh, grifting complete. There you go. We're grifting. We're grifting like crazy right now. Mike, stop grifting me with all this informational content and opinions on them. You, I'm sorry for um, 
helping socialists get elected. What's hilarious from the, the, the mic, I almost want this guy back. I want to, I, I want this guy back. We literally, this week, it, right now in my DMs, in my DMs, one of the main organizers in Milwaukee for the socialists we just helped get elected this Tuesday. This Tuesday, we just helped these people get elected. We just did. The race to become a Milwaukee County supervisor, Josh Sepnick was a former state lawmaker, once accused of drunkenly kissing two women without consent. Unofficial results show him 17 votes behind uh, in his county he supervisor race. He won by 17 rate. votes! Your money made it happen! He won by 17 fucking votes! We literally just helped get a socialist elected by a thumbnail! How the fuck was it so close? The guy sounds like a fucking scum fuck. He's been there forever. Sepnik says he trusts the election results and will not be asking for a recount. It would have cost him more than five thousand dollars if he were to have done. That. Mango TCG, thank of, you for the uh, seventeen gifted subs. You don't have to do that, brother. I appreciate that. Sir Brain, thank you for the six tier ones. Uh, this is this is the reality. Of now, listen. Do am I making the am I single-handedly electing Bernie Sanders president? No, obviously not. But what we're trying to do is build a community that makes a contribution. That's what we're doing. You're not going to see me sending you all to attack a trans content creator because they disagreed with my misogynist joke. Okay, that's a grifter. That's a scumbag. All right. Walking around projection with anger or resentment. Call um, like a topic. So that's why I just ones. decide I want to move forward from this campaign. It's over with, and I wish uh, the, the new person well. Zeckman says he's now been sober for the last six and a half Devin years. Devin Walker, that's and his a bit. loss means a win for a self-described socialist. Actually, Milwaukee voters elected two of them to serve on the county board. The question is, what does that mean? Jason Kelvey shows us it's not unheard of in Milwaukee history. DSA! Milwaukee's Democratic Socialists of America say they knocked on Red Wizard and he's a reason. Thank you. But that word like kind of scares people. They urged votes for three county board candidates, including Juan Miguel Martinez. It represents people that want change, people that don't have to work three jobs in order to make ends meet, people that want uh, proper health care, people that want access to mutual aid resources and people that want affordable housing. The teachers union also endorsed Martinez. He won his race by 17 votes, but a Journal Sentinel report cited his past Facebook post. In one he wrote, the Republican Party should be aborted. Another called a police officer a pig. When I had like uh, said that in the past, it was a response to uh, communities of color that have been uh, consistently targeted throughout the, throughout history um, as uh, being as uh, being beaten down. Uh, not having a right to due process a lot of times. Soon he'll be one of 18 county supervisors and he wants to slash the sheriff's Wait, budget. wasn't this guy in your stream like that, a couple weeks ago? Yeah. <laughs> the election happened. He unseated an incumbent by 17 votes. We did it. Uh, it's less about defunding and it's more about reallocating the funds for proper resources. Remember when Juan so Miguel was on the thrive. stream? And he said he had to run to get that last Zipnik sign off the house off his own block? Worth. No shit! He's not the first socialist elected to the Milwaukee County Board. Mike, when are you going to have some NATO agent or CIA yeah. agent in an interview to show your leftist community how awesome they are? What's really funny to me about Vouch <clears throat> is I come from a military family, and so I know these guys, and there's nothing cool about them. They're just bro. They're just people who got a job. And the question is, what are they doing with that job? Oh, they're doing uh, war crimes? Means they're bad. Probably shouldn't listen to them. Can you? I mean, like, come on.
Joy Eki, thank you for the tier one. The history of socialism Attic. in Milwaukee is not one of ideology, but of really practical things. It was public health. It was, you know, sewers. Uh, it was infrastructure. He just wanted to introduce his handler to his community. community. I mean, uh, in a really substantial way. Milwaukee has elected three I think socialist it's mayors that he's between 1910 not and 1960. Like, do we even need to say anything? And the Bridge pays tribute to Milwaukee's second socialist mayor, Daniel Hone, who served from 1916 to 1940. And the third has a prominent city building named after him, Frank Seidler, in Milwaukee. Jason Calvi. Fox 6 News. Hey, they're teaching about sewer socialism now. Because we got a socialist elected, local news is teaching the local grannies of Milwaukee now know more about sewer socialism that than the long, entire rich. vouch community combined. That's why we help people get elected and they sit there talking about online drama. Fucking losers. All right, let's get back to somebody who's actually good. Did you watch the new Noah video? We might watch it today. I, people spit. I spit on leftists like Vosh. When Bonnie tells you about how Maine's requirements for TANF forced her into looking for a job to get access to TANF funds, despite being just weeks away from giving birth My cam and is raising four oh, young children even... alone after her husband was imprisoned. Luckily, she got the money, but only once she secured a job. Like, just weeks after giving birth, okay, of course, I can, I can and it, unluckily, yeah. Thanks, not for long when her husband was released from jail. Despite being separated for nearly two years at that point and no longer living together or sharing finances, the state suddenly cut Bonnie's access to TANF, citing that her family no longer met, quote, deprivation standards. All the while, the state of Maine sat on over a hundred million dollars specifically set aside Disgusting. for people like Bonnie that it would not give out that year. By the way, chat, Joseph Robinette Biden we have 30 seconds left on the hype train. Joseph Robinette Biden ended the child tax credit, which would have given Bonnie $300 per kid per month. Joe Biden ended that because he thought you wanted it him to. This horrible approach to welfare it's is pretty good. Don't focus so much on V the person and more on the taxes he uses. I mean, he's it's both him personally. He's disgusting. And the tactics he uses are disgusting. So it's kind of a both and type situation. Fucking dying laughing because I want to see primary care physician. I'm going to have to wait till the fall to have the rash on my ass looked at. Thank Christ we don't live in a socialist society where I might have been placed on a waiting list for my health care. Loose off. Thanks for the 200 bits, man. I hope you get that checked out. Uh, big squid and 25 cats named Sam. Thank you both for gifting. Why well, is everything depressing? What do you mean? We just elected a socialist. We did it. We're winning. Means testing. Calling a program means tested is a euphemistic way to say that that welfare program is conditional. Basically, to get Bad access to the funds Thank or you. the welfare squid, service, you. you have to prove that you need it. And you can easily see how, in theory, the idea doesn't sound so bad. Why should people who don't need something get access to it? Why should we give the wealthy access to services meant to help the poor? But those questions are misguided. We are absurdly far away from what the theory of means testing is. And there is absolutely no way to make means testing work. The reality of the world we live in is that this kind of rhetoric about keeping services out of the hands of the wealthy by means testing them is nothing more than a smokescreen politicians use to keep money out of the hands of the poor, those who actually do need the help. The only viable approach to making welfare meaningful and effective under embedded liberalism is through universal programs. Why is that? Well, why don't you just stick around and find out? Let's run through a couple technical problems with means testing. And then, maybe, if you're well behaved and say your pleases and thank yous, we'll talk about the more interesting political implications of a universal system of welfare. But before we do that, you need to hunker down and make some room in that big brain of yours to understand no, just how bad just means testing is. It. It's bad. Means testing is bad for a couple of reasons. But before you can even get to them, well-meaning people and swindling politicians dismiss the whole thing out of hand. I work for Ohio Unemployment. We fucked people. Worst con service customer service job ever to tell people you're there to help. No, you can't because your state sucks. I mean... You could always make rulings. Every single ambiguous ruling, you rule in favor of the person. You just do your best to fucking get as much unemployment out the door as possible. You tell them all the tricks and how to apply and how to appeal.
you do everything you can. If you have a job like that and you're in a you're in a you're a bureaucrat and you're managing a welfare program, you do everything in your power to put more people on the program. If somebody comes in with a mistake, you just say to them, "You made a mistake. You didn't mean to turn in that form." And on account of the cost. The argument usually goes like this. If we have a limited government budget to fund after certain week, programs, yeah. surely it's more expensive to give something to everybody than it would be to only give it to the people we're trying to target. Good news, it isn't. Numerous studies have been conducted on this topic, so I won't go too far into the details. But here's just one by the Center for Economic and Policy Research about using means testing for social security. Let's zoom in on the last line there. Okay, what does that say? Let's give that a look. Oh, wouldn't you know it, means testing is not an effective route for reducing the cost of social security. Wow, shocker. The problem with thinking that reducing the number of people who access a service would reduce its costs is that means testing doesn't just happen by magic. When you means test a program, you add costs. On top of the costs you'll need anyway to distribute the welfare program, you are creating a bureaucratic apparatus and hiring a bunch of people to decide who gets in and who gets left out when you means test. That costs money. Quite a lot of money. Often more than you're saving by limiting the number of recipients. Those bureaucratic costs aren't nothing. And the reason this study gets to its anti-means testing conclusion is because unless you cut out a lot of people from accessing welfare services, notably a chunk of people you're specifically trying to reach, means testing costs as much or sometimes even more than just providing the service universally. But okay, let's assume that isn't the reason you're a fan of means testing. Let's assume you're still bothered by the idea of wealthy people getting a free check in the mail or whatever. After all, why should old Jeffy B's get a cool extra K every month? The real answer is, who cares? If we're thinking in a traditional economic framework, we could just tax the wealthy by an amount greater than they receive in public services. That way, they're not getting anything extra from a welfare service. Or, if you're more partial to thinking in modern monetary theory terms, well, honestly, if you're an mmt -er, you probably aren't worried about funding welfare services at all. But if you were, the destructive function of taxation could just be absorbed disproportionately by the wealthy. More about that topic, by the way, if you check out either of these two fantastic videos about what MMT is. In any case, whether it's funding in general or some fraction of the welfare money or service going to the wealthy, it's really not an issue. It's a very minor part of a welfare service and can- I want to say one thing that I think more leftists should be talking about. This is kind of like a, a, a I would call this surface level pol public policy discussion. It's a larger category. Have you ever heard of the uh, have you ever heard of a supply side economist chat? You know what? Have you heard of a supply cider? Basically, a supply cider is traditionally associated with a far right type laugher, what's known as the laugher curve. Basically, the idea is to make the economy grow, we need a more supply of investment cash in the economy. We need to provide, we need to cut taxes on the rich, cut investment, you know, capital gains taxes. We need to provide more wealth for the wealthiest so that it can trickle down. It's also known as the trickle down theory, the horse and sparrow theory. Theory, the horse and sparrow theory is uh, it was originally called uh, that instead of trickle down. Basically, the horse and sparrow theory is if you feed horses enough oats, they're not going to be able to digest them all, and they'll crap some of the oats out, and sparrows will be able to dig through the horse's crap to get those excess oats. So the horse and sparrow theory, sparrow theory is you shove enough cash down the maw of the rich, they'll eventually crap some out of it, some out, that the poor can dig through their feces to get some of it. They upgraded it away from the horse and sparrow theory to the trickle-down theory, which is you give money to the rich, it'll trickle down. That's not what I'm talking about. That's garbage. That doesn't work. Even if it's own face, it doesn't work. I'll give you an example. The United States of America taxes U.S. citizens and corporations. If you cut the taxes of U.S. citizens and corporations, 
They don't have to invest in America. We live in a neoliberal globalist order. They could take their tax cuts and go invest in Vietnam. So your American tax cuts just even if you and that's if you accept every other fucking assumption about supply side economics, uh, the conservative conception, even if you accept every other thing, they have capital li liquidity and freedom. They could go and invest in another fucking country and you'd be hard pressed to show the welfare enhancing benefits for a Pennsylvania steel worker because a rich Wall Street guy went and invested in Vietnam. Okay doesn't exist especially when compared to i don't know the steel mill closing okay that's supply side theory in a nutshell horse and sparrow theory trickle down doesn't work we know it for a fact there was just a huge study from the london school of economics proving definitively that su that supply side laffer curve tax cuts for the rich don't work here i'll pull it up for you i'm not talking about that I'm talking about what's known as sewer socialism or supply side socialism. What's supply side socialism? Supply side socialism is the exact opposite of supply side economics. What you do in supply side socialism is you go, we have a housing crisis. We're going to build more houses, which in other words, you're going to directly build supply. You're going to directly build supply. Oh, we don't have enough. We don't have a good transportation system. You directly build a transportation system. Oh, housing prices are exploding. How do you solve that? You build public housing. College is unaffordable. What do you do? You build more colleges. You give more funding to universities. You directly address the problem by doing the thing directly, not incentivize a public private partnership, not lower taxes on uh, building developers. You take government money, you take government employees and you build the shit directly. That's what we don't have in America. And that's what we haven't had since the sixties. Whether you vote for a Democrat or you vote for a Republican, they're going to try to stimulate the economy by tinkering with the tax code or maybe providing money, but they're not actually going to do the thing itself. Canada banned non-citizens from buying real estate for two years. That's, that is a, uh, that is a demand side restriction, right? So that's a, a I mean, I think that's a policy that I would probably do. Maybe, but a far better policy would be to build housing directly, take land, take houses from the rich, bulldoze their mansion and build high quality public housing on it. Increase density directly. Where can I read more info on sewer socialism? I've looked it up and can't find anything. Uh, there's a really good articles in the New York Times, the Washington Post, Jacobin. I don't know that there's a book about it. There's, a, there's another article in Slate called Let's Bring Back the Sewer Socialists. Uh, we have, uh, let's see, uh, the, uh, here's the New York Times article. The city Sanders and Ocasio-Cortez would have loved to live in. Like, this is not exactly progressives around the country are recalling sewer socialist proud history. Like, this is something that anybody who's educated about socialism or leftism knows about it, right? So there's a lot of, uh, uh, of, uh, articles available on it can be worked around very easily. Politicians that absolutely love means testing, like everyone's favorite, Joe Manchin, really don't like this fact, and they will lie and manipulate- Sewer socialism is just reformist socialism, actually, but at the municipal level. ...to keep that hidden from you. Look, here's him talking about the Build Back Better Act and how he doesn't like that it doesn't have means testing for the child tax credit. 
when they first brought the bill out, I said, Chuck Schumer, there's nothing in there about accountability, holding people accountable. There's no work requirement. There's no means testing to where you're targeting the people really need it. To give, put, give you an example, the child tax credit. Do you believe people making two and four hundred thousand dollars would still get the child tax credit the same as someone making fifty, sixty, or seventy that really needs it? They didn't do that. So that price goes up. He's wrong about all of that, by the way. Child tax credits under Build Back Better are means tested. He's just using that as an excuse to be an obstructionist. So to recap, not only is he lying about the higher cost of universal programs in order to block and thin out the more ambitious parts of a BBB plan, but the plan he's obstructing is not great in the first place because it already has means tested provisions in there. Honestly, the guy is terrible. That's why we here at Second Thought proudly certify Mr. Joe Manchin is a bad dude. Good luck getting re-elected to your 27th year in government now, Mr. Senator. Okay, so, bad news. Oh no, Manchin's gonna lose. Manchin's toast. Manchin's gonna get the fuck out of there. He's gonna be thrown the fuck out of office chat in, uh... Yeah, that's... Uh, yeah, he's, he's... he's... he's fucked. He's not gonna make it. There are more problems he's gonna lose with to means Republican, testing. Yeah. For starters, there exist all sorts of means tests. Some of them genuinely heartless, like requiring a negative drug test to get access to public services in at least 15 states, such as... Sorry if this is a silly question, but should I get a physical copy of Jacobin? Uh, yeah, they're amazing. They're really nice. Well, they're well produced, so... And it's $10 for a physical uh, subscription, plus you get the digital if you like that. DRM free. Using coupon code Central Committee. Alabama, Arkansas, Arizona, Florida, Georgia, Kansas, Michigan, Mississippi, Missouri, North Carolina, Oklahoma, Tennessee, Utah, West Virginia, and Wisconsin. Whew. Including for programs like food stamps, literally treating addicts as less than human and cutting off their access to food. No big deal. And in other places, public services are put behind work requirements. Also pretty bad given how getting a job isn't fully up to you, it's highly influenced by personal or societal factors, and the constant pool of unemployed people kept as a labor reserve for a capitalist economy to tactically push wages down with the threat of termination. But that's not all. A large portion of welfare services, even supposedly, quote, universal programs, are put behind a poverty test meaning you need to make less than a specific amount to get access to programs, which governments check using the official poverty measure, or OPM if you crushed all the letters together. Programs like Medicaid, Medicare, SNAP, Head Start, and a lot of others use the OPM in one way or another as part of the way to determine eligibility. And the thing they don't tell you about the OPM is that it's a totally arbitrary number. The official poverty measure is not some objective fact handed down to us from the gods defining who's poor and who's not. Like many parts of the American welfare system, the OPM was built on a random number someone calculated for something else, and one day everybody started using it for everything and anything, including deciding who lives and who dies. If that sounds extreme, a study by the Columbia School of Public Health found that around 160,000 people died in the U.S. due to a lack of social support, a low-end estimate considering the study adds a separate 130,000 deaths to, quote, individual-level poverty. With all those lives on the line, you'd hope they calculated the number correctly, right? But they didn't. While we don't have time to get into the full history of the OPM and all of its many, many problems, the short version is this. Molly Orshansky, an economist working for the government in the 60s, developed the OPM using the absolute most restrictive meal plan from the Department of Agriculture designed only for, quote, temporary or emergency use when funds are low. Basically, a number calculated by the Department of Agriculture for how much money you need to not literally starve. Molly, brilliant economist that she is, multiplied it by three to account for all the other stuff people need to buy to live that's not food, and called that number the poverty line. Just three. Because why not, if you're bored working for the Social Security Administration, just randomly multiply a number by three and hope it covers all of a family's costs of living. Some of the problems with this measure, other than the fact that it's as close to arbitrary as it gets, is that it assumes that households have a full-time housewife in the home to cook oh, yeah. and carefully purchase all the food a household yeah. needs, and that poverty and prices for necessities are equal across the entire United States. Which, how did that work out?
Orshansky herself considered this measure a, quote, conservative underestimate of the poverty in the U.S. But just a couple months after she created it, the federal government took this number under the Johnson administration's war on poverty and slapped it on everything, leading us to where we are today, where the OPM, or some multiple of it, can decide your access to federal social services. Incredible. That one number is the line between life and death for hundreds of thousands of Americans. So there's that. And th I just had a meeting about health insurance at work and the lady was saying the medical care that got better and cheaper was plastic surgery because you can shop it. So you should do that with all health care. But plastic surgery isn't life saving. Well, a couple things. First of all, um, plastic surgery is. Is any is elastic in the sense that somebody might not get plastic surgery if it's too expensive because, you know, they can't afford it. But if you need a heart transplant. You're going to pay whatever you have because the alternative is dying. The utility of your money goes to zero when you're dead. Secondly, uh, most of the procedures for plastic surgery are relatively simple as opposed to some of the treatments for things like cancer. So they have, you know, I'm sorry, but boob, boob jobs aren't exactly the most complex uh, pieces of surgery in the fucking planet. Okay. Like, they're, they're really not that difficult. Um, and some plastic surgery is life-saving, but that's reconstructive surgery, which is different. I'm in Ohio and disabled, and not only do they keep us from having any money saved if my car breaks down, for example, we are forced to have the worst health care. They have no dental health co coverage. If I need a root canal, sorry, not going to, we have no service contracts. I also, I only get 15 bunks and stoop. 15? Jesus. There's more. I won't spend too long on them, but there are a couple other problems. Means testing creates, or at the very least exacerbates, the stigma of receiving social services, which sucks when you're trying to help people get out of poverty. If getting a service singles you out and brands you with the label poor, you're more likely to not take advantage of it because of the shame associated with it. I can't tell you how many people don't take food stamps because of the shame. Even though they could afford it, like they desperately need it. The idea of going to the store and trying to look the cashier in the eye, who's probably on food stamps themselves, is too much shame for some people. It's ridiculous! Sadly, this is a well-documented phenomenon. On top of that, means testing creates really perverse incentives that can keep people trapped in poverty for longer. When multiple programs are tied to the OPM, and you step even one dollar over that line, you can suddenly start footing the bill for all sorts of services you didn't before. And while you're no longer officially poor on paper, you can suddenly start living in much worse poverty. And it doesn't end there. The complexity of means testing means that a lot of people who are specifically targeted by means tested programs never get access to them. Between the complexity of filling out forms to prove you're as poor as you say you are, knowing those forms even exist, and the bureaucracy of making sure you're not lying, means testing keeps countless thousands out of the services the government has explicitly acknowledged they are entitled to. No matter what angle you take, means testing simply does not work. In contrast, universal programs like free college or free healthcare all fill the gaps of these massive problems with means testing with no downsides for the people who need these services the most. Universal programs are also just more popular. For one of the country's few sort of universal programs, Social Security, a Pew survey found that over 74% of Americans agree that no cuts should be made. A clear and strong approval for a universal approach to welfare. Compare that with the constant demands and efforts to cut funding to food, health, and housing aid for the poor, and universal programs are a standout in the American welfare state. And here we find a big part of the reason most of our welfare isn't universal. Beyond a few technical issues with niche welfare programs, the main barrier to universal welfare is the kind of politics that a universal policy creates for the wealthy. Universal programs are good for class solidarity. The same way that Social Security gets broad, popular support, other universal programs, more expansive in their reach and more relevant to people's everyday lives, can serve as a way to build collective interests among the lower and so-called middle class who benefit from redistribution. 
when these groups are united in their interests, defending a common program that serves their collective needs, they create a politics of mass solidarity that, in turn, That's creates a stronger counterpower to the owning class. You should ask yourself, are, am I creating a politics of mass solidarity? That should be your guiding, guiding light. By contrast, by discriminating in favor of the poor, the targeted model creates a zero-sum conflict of interest between the poor and the better-off workers and the middle classes who must pay for the benefits of the poor without receiving any benefits. Means-testing programs targeting the poor create strong feelings of resentment among the comparatively better-off middle class. A feeling of resentment relayed in our media with tropes of laziness and selfish quote welfare queens themselves tangled up in racist imagery targeting black and, and by other- by the way, welfare queen? Like if somebody thrift- goes to the thrift store and buys themselves stylish clothes, they could look really good while not spending much money. But it's easy to demagogue people and- and the culture, you know, being a dandy, taking pride in your appearance, that's something that some people care a lot about. Obviously, I don't. But for some people, they spend a lot of time and effort putting it into that as a hobby, as something that's important to them. You don't have to be ugly just because you're poor. For minority groups, these fractures in society pit the proletariat against itself, with constant worry from the middle class that they are being taken advantage of when the poor get quote-unquote undeserved benefits like a higher minimum wage, rather than worrying about the massive amounts of money and power higher on the economic ladder that has a much bigger impact see, on see, their you lives. you could be ugly and rich like me. No, I'm just kidding, I'm not rich. <sighs> Feels bad. Means testing parcels out Unless you gift me a lot of subs. Working class into Anybody want to gift me a million subs? Great interest groups. <laughs> disunited and competing among themselves. Universal programs do the opposite, bringing as large a group as possible under the same umbrella, ready to defend their interest as a group because their collective interests are also their individual interests. With universal, transparent, and generous policies, Ooh. we can bring people into politics Wait, on the grounds of solidarity, not factional competition. There is some evidence of this working on so, not really you know, universal, like, yeah. but more what inclusive the programs. What is this? At the time an American city elected a socialist mayor. This is a sower socialist documentary? God damn! We might have to watch that at some point. Remind me. Next time we have a really slow day. Like the World War II GI Bill, which brought black beneficiaries. Out, you're like, it came out a while ago. February 1st. You like, it's two months. Come on. To being a millionaire. Or maybe you already are. Will we ever know? chat when i have a million dollars i'll let you know dio uh lucino thank you for the uh 20 tier one subs let me just say this i'm nowhere near getting a million dollars <laughs> i'm nowhere near <clears throat> numerical whistle thanks for the 200 bits into the game of politics to once I have a million uh, million dollars I'm rebranding as champagne socialist Mike from PA to defend their benefits and claim their status of full citizens with more vigor black GI bill users immerse themselves in confrontational political activity challenging politics as usual in order to gain the rights of equal citizenship during the height of the civil rights era 1950 to 1964, 35% of black users participated in such activities compared to 8% of black non-users. Incredible. That is a big difference. Wow. And a very similar thing wow, happened with a, low income. Wow, that's really good research. I just learned something. See, this is why I like second thought. You can learn something. From seniors and social security. Inclusion into welfare programs also means inclusion in confrontational politics to preserve that inclusion and extend it. And look, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like expanding the welfare... Can I repeat that? Okay, here. Yeah, we'll play it. Basically, the uh, GI Bill gave free college for GIs, and, and it was black GIs who used the GI Bill that led the civil rights movement. ...of this working on not really universal, but more inclusive programs like the World War II GI Bill, which brought black beneficiaries into the game of politics to defend their benefits and claim their status of full citizens with more vigor black GI Bill users immersed themselves in confrontational political activity. 
challenging politics as usual in order to gain the rights of equal citizenship. During the height of the civil rights era, 1950 Diego, to 1964. by the way, uh, thank you so much. What the fuck? Like, you just, you just all of a sudden dropped 20 gifted subs? Like, what the fuck? Thank you so much. 35% of black users participated in such activities compared to 8% of black non-users. That is a big difference, and a very similar thing happened with low-income seniors and social security. Inclusion into Thanks welfare programs work. also means inclusion in confrontational politics to preserve that inclusion and extend it. And look, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like expanding the welfare state within embedded liberal regimes is the end goal. Far from it. Plenty of ink has been spilled on social democracy and liberalism, systems under which labor is, by definition, subordinated to capital when it is working with the state. These are unstable systems under which any sort of welfare program can only function so long as profit rates are not too threatened. And the minute this is not the case, capital reclaims the full extent of its repressive power. I am well aware of that, and we shouldn't ignore it. But given the lack of class solidarity we have in this country, and how crucial that solidarity is for the success of a true democracy, universal programs, beyond bringing a direct and immediate improvement to people's lives, could represent a key avenue for a better politics. I mentioned at the beginning of this episode that we've got a new YouTube channel for the deprogram, where we'll be doing one live stream per month in addition to our usual podcast episodes. The first one was a lot of fun, and we're really looking forward to seeing what questions you all come up with next time. If you like the kind of content we're putting out, remember to subscribe to the Deprogram YouTube channel and click the bell to be notified of each new upload. And if you really want to support the podcast, consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash the deprogram. Patron perks include early access to new episodes, a bonus episode per month, and for the highest tier patrons, a because, private voice uh, chat with Hakeem, you got Nick and me every one. month. I Links to the YouTube channel and our point. Patreon are in the description. Thank you so much for your support. All right, everybody, we really couldn't there. do it without you. Everybody, grub, jump If you in enjoyed there, this video, consider dropping like. a like. If you hated it, a thumbs down. You can check out my previous episodes by clicking the links on your screen. Thanks for watching, and I'll Hell see you next yeah, week. Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. Banana Grabber, thanks for the five tier ones. And Bad Luck Jr., thank you for the five tier ones. This is pretty great. We hit the, we hit the sub goal already. You got to get the deprogrammed squad on your channel before Azan chatters are pushing it. I could probably